Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear brothers and sisters in the uh, majlis tafsir the tafsir sessions that we started in the first day of the month of Ramadan and inshallah our hope is to continue from today up to the time that we will finish Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem Insha'Allah Ta'ala, one day we ask Allah to make it easy and to give us the time and the health to continue this journey with the book of God, the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Last uh, episode, I spoke about the harmony between each verse in each surah and the next one and the previous one and the harmony and the tenacity between uh, each surah and the other surah that's why when you read the Quran itself as one book uh, you will see that it's all connected it's all together that's why when you know Arabic and when you study the Balagha and when you know the Nahu the grammars in Arabic, you will understand what is the meaning of having this kind of revelation in 23 years. And after you collect all those verses together and chapters together, you will never find any single mistake between the verses in the same surah. That's why I want you to understand that this book no hand man touch it at all it's immediately from God to us through Jibreel peace be upon him and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and it has been written immediately between the hand of the Prophet peace be upon him with the supervision of Jibreel the angel of revelation and in each month of Ramadan a lot of revision has been happened between Jibreel peace be upon him and our messenger peace be upon him to make sure that what the committee wrote uh, in that time it's a match and the same of what the revelation used to be so a lot of scholars as I said last episode they wrote books about this kind of harmony and tenacity between the uh, verses, the ayat, and the surahs, the chapters in the Quran, like Imam al Razi, Imam al Biqa'i, uh, his book is Nadm al Durar, Fi Tanasu bil Ayi wa Suwar. This is uh, the full name of the book, but the known name of this book is Nadm al Durar. A lot of scholars they wrote a lot of books and we will inshallah uh, rely on those books in our uh, journey of understanding the book of God the final message to the humanity and absolutely as I said last week if there is book for God the book should speak about itself directly to us that's why it's uh, an invitation to everybody go and read what God wants you to understand. Don't turn your mind off, turn it on, read and read and read. And it's not by chance the first revelation came to the humanity in the last message of God. It wasn't pray, it wasn't fast, it wasn't give charity, it was read. So if you are not reading, you are not responding to the command of God when he said read 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 al balagha it's a type of building the language that you should be able to say without mistakes and you should be able to answer without hesitation this is the definition of balagha in Arabic. To speak without mistakes and to answer without hesitation. And absolutely, 
it will touch the heart of the audience. This is the balagha. That's why when you, inshallah, follow uh, me, you will understand what I mean by balagha to Quran, the balagha in the Quran, the balagha in the language of the Quran. First uh, thing we want to focus on today, the difference between the word tafsiru and the word ta'wilu. A tafsir is the name of the knowledge looking for uh, the meaning of the vocabulary of the Quran and what we can benefit out of those vocabulary. This is a tafsir. That's why in Arabic when you say fassara means he clarifies. The result of the clarification is a tafsir. And this knowledge that it started in the first stage of uh, having the Muslim society, Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, used to ask questions like Umar ibn al Khattab. He asked the Prophet about the word Kalala in chapter number four. Ali, the son of Abu Talib ibn Abbas, the son of Abbas, Zaydu, uh, the son of Thabit, Ubay, the son of Kaab, and the Abdullah, the son of Mas'ud. And the Abdullah, the son of Amr ibn al As. Those are a group of the companions they used to ask about a certain meanings uh, in the Quran. And then people used to go and ask them uh, after the death of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So those are, if you want to call them, the most famous and popular companions of the Prophet that they used to speak, they used to teach about the meanings of the verses about tafsir. From the followers of the companions, what we call them tabi'een, we have very famous tabi'een. They used to speak and teach and educate and narrated uh, a narration about the tafsir like Mujahid and the son of Jubair. But the first person who wrote a book just in those narrations about the tafsir, the first one, uh, Abdul Malik, the son of Juraj al Makki, the one who was born 80 years after the migration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he passed away 149. But to be honest with you, the ulama, the scholars found a lot of unauthentic narrations uh, in those books, especially uh, some liars, they uh, took the son of Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, and they put a lot of fake and made up stories in his mouth. That's why we have to double check the chain of any narration, then double check about each individual narrators and then if they are all uh, honest and trust then we can take the, the, their uh, absolutely riwaya or narration and we should not forget that the two empires around the muslim empire the muslim civilization used to uh, do a lot of effort to put this new uh, faith down by absolutely sending people to announce their faith, but they were not Muslims, they were not believers. Just their job is to create uh, chaos, to create errors, to spread the, the rumors and the bad explanation for the principles of the Quran. And most of them, alhamdulillah, they've been catched, and most of them now, they've been distinguished from the the correct narrations and the non-correct narrations. That's why when you open the Sahih al-Bukhari, you will be surprised that Imam al-Bukhari, because he is to be very smart and he is the expert in this field, when he uh, uh, put in his book any hadith, any narration to uh, Ibn Abbas, he took one chain leads to Ibn Abbas, which is Ibn Abi Talha and Ibn Abbas only. So any riwayah, not from the way of uh, the son of Abi Talha, 
Imam al-Bukhari, he did not put it in his book because he knows in his time that a lot of people, they lie on behalf of Ibn Abbas because he used to be the famous Sahabi uh, knowing the tafsir uh, as a result of the dua of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to his cousin. Uh, in that time, absolutely, they understood that a lot of non uh, correct narrations being adopted uh, and uh, they put the name of the son of Abbas as a way of cheating and uh, absolutely uh, make this kind of chaos in the uh, meaning of the, the ayat and the, the tafsir. But from the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Arabic language still uh, there, nothing will change the language and the most powerful shield to protect uh, the meanings and the tafsir from such a bad and uh, wrong uh, riwayat about the meaning of the Quran. That's why I told you in the first episode, we will focus and depend on the language, inshallah ta'ala, in the way of our, inshallah, uh, classes and episodes. Uh, language is the most authentic way to understand the meaning of the verses of the ayat and the chapters insha'Allah ta'ala. Another uh, scholar he wrote a book in the tafsir as a product of tafsir. Uh, his name is Ibn Jarir At-Tabari. Ibn Jarir At-Tabari, uh, he wrote his book uh, and he followed the method of Al-Athar, means he put the, the chain, the narrations leading to him, uh, what we call it as sanad and he did not tell us if this sanad is correct or not correct. He wrote what he received and he let it for the next generation to go and track those narrators and make the distinguish between the correct and non-correct riwayat or narrations out of those chains. But his book is still exists, alhamdulillah, and we can uh, benefit out of the uh, narrations, the riwayat, that it's correct. Another type of scholars, he uh, wrote uh, books in the tafsir, but he did not focus on the uh, the Sanad or the Athar or the narrations and the narrators. He put his own uh, image, his own uh, philosophy, uh, like uh, Abu Ishaq Az-Zajjaj and Abu Ali Al-Farisi. Those uh, two scholars, they went a different way than Ibn Jarir Al-Tabari. Another type of uh, Mufassirin, he used to be, uh, you know, in a situation he loves to collect stories. He loves to collect a lot of narrations, a lot of uh, riwayat, and subhanAllah, they collected in their books uh, a lot of the Israeli narrations. Uh, what we called them last week, or last class, the Israeliyat. And as I told you, we don't need to go that way. We don't need to learn about our faith from the previous nations. Uh, they did not respect their own uh, revelation. They changed a lot of verses and chapters. They modified their own books. They uh, are preaching something. They know that it's not from the Bible and they preach it as it's from the Bible. So no trust. Uh, to collect any kind of faith or any kind of information about the stories of the previous prophets from the previous uh, people. That's why we will not uh, stop on this that long and we will move on inshallah ta'ala to the next level which is when in the same uh, time we had two big scholars, one in the east and one in the west. They wrote beautiful books about at tafsir The one in the East, uh, Abu al-Qasim Mahmoud al-Zamakhshari, uh, 
the one who wrote Al Kashaf, and the other one in Al Andalus in the West, and his name is Abdul Haq ibn Atiyah, and his book is Al Muharrar Al Wajiz. Imam al Zamakhshari, he went the way of uh, language, the Balagha, and uh, the, the Nahu, and it's very beautiful book, very beautiful book. And Ibn Atiyah, he went the way that he focused about the rules and the Ahkam in his book Al Muharrar Al Wajiz. So I want you to understand now. We have Al Kashaf for uh, Imam al Zamakhshari, it's a language book. And we have Al Muharrar al Wajiz for Ibn Atiyah, and it was for the Fiqh and the Ahkam uh, book. So each one of them he focused on a certain uh, field in his book of Tafsir. And this is the beautiful of having diversity, even in, in the way that you handle uh, the Tafsir and the uh, understanding of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we were, are so lucky that we have all those kind of books now between our hands so we can uh, we can go and walk in each field and smell the beauty of each uh, uh, flowers and each roses in those books and put it together to enrich our understanding insha'Allah ta'ala. So let's go back about Tafsir and Ta'wil. As I said, some ulama, they said both are the same meaning. Ta'wil and Tafsir in the same meaning. Uh, other opinion, they said that Tafsir uh, goes for the clear meaning. Ta'wil, it goes for the mutashabih, for uh, the unseen meanings. The thing is hidden under the text. So this is the second opinion about the difference between tafsir and ta'wil. Uh, the third opinion uh, of the scholar, they said at ta'wil, when you take the text itself or the vocabulary itself away from the direct meaning to another meaning, this other meaning has a logic with an evidence. So ta'wil, to take the vocabulary from the clear meaning to uh, indirect meaning with uh, an evidence that it's in the text itself or in the meaning of the text itself. Let me give you an example. يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ If you say that God here in this ayah, in this verse, he is talking about how the bird will come out of the egg, we say this is tafsir. Because you go with the direct meaning of the vocabulary, direct meaning of the sentence. But if somebody else will come and say, hey, wait, God here, he meant that the mu'min will come out of the kafir. Because the mu'min is alive and the kafir is dead, we say this is a ta'wil. This is, this is an example to let you know the difference between tafsir and ta'wil. Tafsir, you go directly. Ta'wil, you go indirectly. You have something in common between the direct meaning and the indirect meaning. Ubada uh, ibn Samit, one of the companions of the Prophet, he narrated this hadith, لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب. There is no salah, there is no prayer being counted for the one that he did not recite Al-Fatiha. Now, this is the hadith, this is the text. If you go directly, no salah means this salah is not counted, not accepted. Other ulama, they go with the majaz. They said la salah means la salah incomplete. No complete salah if you pray without reciting the opening of the book, which is Al-Fatiha. So you see how the languages have the flexibility to give you the direct and indirect meaning. The next uh, point today in our episode, 
we will uh, ask this question what is the definition of al quran absolutely in any definition when you define something you have to make sure that everything related to this theme has to be counted in the definition and anything not belong to this theme or this vocabulary has to be out of the definition so let's go together the first uh, thing we want to focus on when you define the Quran you have to say it's the words Al Quran is words Al Quran it's a revelation so this revelation is the words the words of whom the words of God that has been revealed now the Bible, the Torah, the Zabur, also the words of God that it has been revealed. So when you add now with me that it has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you will take the rest of the revelation out of this definition of Al-Quran. So the words of God that it has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by whom? By angel Jibreel peace be upon him then this words has a certain features make those words unique make this revelation very unique number one the words of God that in Al Quran it is a miracle and it was a miracle and it will stay a miracle what I mean by a miracle the following that no one in the past, today, or in the future can come with the similar of those words. Now here is the question, where is the miracle in the verses of the Quran? Is it in the letter? Is it in the word? Is it in the sentences? Absolutely, it's not in the letters. Anybody can come up with letters like the letters of the Quran Anybody can come up with the similar words of the Quran. I can say Jannah, Nar, Mu'mineen, Kafirin, etc., etc. But the way that you put those words together, the way that you connect the language together to give us the most powerful meaning, this is the miracle in the Quran. In addition of the meaning itself, the way that you put those words together to give me the shape of the sentence which vocabulary you pick in a certain meaning also the music in the sound of those words together also the, the information itself that it's included that kind of uh, sentences so this is what we call it anadhm to how you build those words together when you know Arabic when you know the information that the Quran itself brought to the humanity, you will realize what is the meaning of the miracle. So those words that it has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by Angel Jibreel, peace be upon him, it's a miracle. Nobody can come up with the same of the Quran, not because it's not Arabic. It's Arabic and we are Arabs or you are Arabs, you know the language. But the way that you connect those words together, it's a miracle. In addition of that, not just the build, even the sound itself, each one he will hear those words or he will read those words. He will feel the same feeling that this is something not normal. This is something affects immediately my heart, even if I don't know the language, even if you don't know the, 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 the meaning of those words, you still have a certain influence. And we have a lot of uh, incidents happened here and there about people, they accepted this faith after this kind of surprises, this kind of shock, when they just hear the recitation of this book in addition of that you recite the first chapter of this book in each prayer time you pray in each rak'ah you do you recite the first chapter and I'm asking you this question 
Have you ever felt that you are born? Have you ever felt that you are bored reading the same chapter more than one time in the same day? We never had this kind of feeling. Why? While nobody is willing to speak or to say the same sentences more than one or two times. Nobody will go and read the same book that he bought it from a certain library or a certain place. Uh, he will maybe read it for one time, two times. After that, you put it on the shelf. Or, but you're reading these verses every single day without feeling that I am boring, without feeling that I just read it, why I'm doing it again. This kind of secret, brothers and sisters, what I meant by it's a miracle. So let's go back in the definition again. The words of God. It has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by Angel Jibreel, peace be upon him. And the words itself, it's a miracle. It's a mu'jizah. The next uh, part of the definition, that this kind of revelation came to us by Tawatur. What I mean by Tawatur, that in each generation, after the Prophet, peace be upon him, we have a lot of people, they transfer it, they narrate it to the next generation. And those individuals, they don't know each other. They never see each other. They never travel to each other, so no way, by logic, they agreed together to tell us the same verses while they never seen each other. They just got it from their own uh, uh, community, from their own parents, uh, in all the diversity, all the direction in the community. So, no way, while this is the way of having this book, to find any mistake because all the people are reciting the same verses while nobody from those people seen each others or knew each others or visited each others. That's absolutely an indication that this book is correct. What we received from them is the original. So this is what we call it at Tawatur and how you can test if you go and search for all the versions of this book since uh, uh, the day of the companions up to this day, you will see the same book, the same verses. Nothing has been changed. This is a big evidence that the original was from God. And what we received, if it's like the original, means nobody, no hand, of uh, a man touch this uh, book at all. So the words of God, it has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by Angel Jibreel, and it's a miracle. We received it by Tawatur, a lot of generation in each time, narrated and deliver it to the next generation without having any kind of possibility that made it up or they will lie because nobody knows uh, the other uh, group. Nobody met others. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The next uh, point in the definition that this words that it's been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by Angel Jibreel, peace be upon him, and it's Mu'jiz, and it's Mutawatir. The next one, it's counted as obedience and worshipping to God when you read it. What we call it in Arabic, Muta'abbad bitilawati. The recitation of the words of this book is obedience, it's worshipping. What I mean by this uh, point means if you want to pray, you have to recite those words. You can't recite others. You can't recite the Hadith words. You can't recite the saying of the Prophets in your 
worshiping time. And the second point, when you recite, you will be rewarded. And as you know, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, when you recite each letter in this book, you will get 10 hasana, 10 good deeds in your record. So this is a beautiful way to increase your good deeds, to increase your relation with God when you recite his words. As I said in the beginning, if there is book for God, the book should speak about itself by itself. So I need to know who is my Lord, what he wants from me. So I have to go and read. And your reading and your recitation is not free. You will be rewarded. Ten good deeds for each letter. You recite it from the book of the Quran, from the verses of the Quran. And even when you say Alif Lam Mim, the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah, Alif Lam Mim uh, are three letters. And each letter you will get ten hasana. So you are having 30 good deeds in your record by just saying Alif Lam Mim. The next point in the definition of the Quran that this words of God it has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him by Angel Jibreel peace be upon him and it's a miracle and it's counted when you recite and when you uh, uh, pray and we have received those words by Tawatur generation after generation where you can find those words, they are in the Mus'haf. So the words of God that has been revealed, now it's in the Mus'haf. So there is a big difference between Mus'haf and Qur'an. The Qur'an is the words. The Mus'haf is a book, is a paper and a cover, hardcover and ink. What has been written in the Masahif is Al-Quran. But the Mus'haf itself is not Al-Quran. That's why it's a copy, it's a virgin. It's the written Quran. So we have one Quran, but we have a lot of Mus'hafs. That's why in Arabic, you can say Qur'ans or Qura'een, if you go with the, uh, the broken plural. Yes, we have one Quran, but we have a lot of Masahif means a lot of books uh, has inside those books the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think now it's very clear. Let's review the definition uh, again with me. The words of God has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by Angel Jibreel, peace be upon him. Those words are a miracle we receive them by Tawatur and I explain the meaning of Tawatur generation after generation. And those words are counted in your praying and your recitation and you will be rewarded for reading and reciting those words. And it's in the Masahif. If you need to read the Quran, if you need to touch the Quran, you open the Mus'haf. And the Mus'haf is just the book has those words in it. And now you can have those words in the, the devices like computer, apps, uh, phones, uh, CDs. Every technology now you have, you can have the copy of the Quran in it. And this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can read the Quran uh, in, in any time, in any, any place. And also in any language, the meaning of the Quran, the translation of the Quran, now it's available. So no excuse for anyone to say I don't have it or I don't know it or I don't have time for it. I think if there is well, there is way just put the niya inside your heart that you want to educate yourself and you want to learn and God will make it easy for you. May Allah bless all of you. See you next episode uh, with the blessing of God. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah accept our effort. May Allah increase our knowledge and our iman. اللهم آمين جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته